part two, Amen. and I believe we're going to take up by having a look at Saul. Yeah, yeah. so as I was saying that um, Saul, um, he basically didn't obey the word of God, no. right? And the word of God, when the word of God come to us, God wants us to listen to his word, Amen. and he wants us to obey it. Right. Saul was in a position where Saul basically didn't obey God's word. He, he liked to give God offering and sacrifice. sacrifice. Right. And God came to Saul a few times and said, I desire, I don't, I, you know, I don't desire offering. I don't desire sacrifice, but to obey my, my voice. My, my voice. So, Saul end up the word of God. You see, when the word of God come to us, the word of God come to change us. Mm -hmm. The word of God come to, um, to, to to come to our spirit, come to our soul. And what are we doing with it? You see, when Saul fell, by Saul rejecting God's word, God's word reject him. Oh, Jesus. <coughs> you see, many a times people think that when someone dies. That's the end of the person. Or, you know, the person rejecting God when they go out from the quote-unquote church and swearing and doing the work of the flesh. That's not when. It's, you reject God. God's word is not going to leave you. When Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, that's what he means. Yeah. His word is on earth today for every and anybody who will respect it and obey it. He said, come unto me, I will come unto you. Amen. If you abide in me, I will abide in you. You know, if you, if you love me, he said, I love you and I will come in, I will sup with you. So the word of God is here for all of us. But what happened? People reject God's word. When, and, and we see a lot of rejection is happening. Like you have the uh, New King James Version, you have the NIV, you have the um, Amplified. People do not really respect the word of God enough to see that it is enough. They want to add to it. The Bible said, if you add to my word, you should not, you should not add to his word. So people add to God's word. This is what Saul wanted to do. Saul didn't respect the word of God enough to obey it. And as a result, God said, you have rejected the word of the Lord. No, God has rejected you. Today, he's taken away the kingdom of from you My so the thing about it and from that time what happened Saul went to see a woman a witchcraft woman yeah. why because when the word of God leave you and so the thing I was thinking about Saul the other day I was saying you know what Saul said he tried to reach God and he mm. couldn't and it's the same thing like um, it was uh, Esau yeah. The Bible said, even though Esau yeah. seek to reach he God, he in tears he could but not he find him. Why? Because God, he reject the word and the counsel of God. Oh, it is quite, in, it's quite um, a dangerous mm -hmm. thing to see the word of God come to you mm -hmm. as gentle right. as a baby. You know what it is? It's like a little baby, a little child come yes. to you. And that child is so naive and just so innocent mm -hmm. and, and you actually kill that child. Wow. Jeez. You said, I don't because Jesus come into us tender, oh, mild, yes. meek, humble. Like a just a little lamb. Mm -hmm. And he's coming with all the tenderness, all the love and all the peace and all the joy. <clears throat> and he come with all of that. And when he come, you just run him away. I don't want nothing to do with you. Jesus. Go away. You slap him in the face. You crucify him again. Yes. You have no root out that life mm -hmm. that was there for you as a gift Jesus. to give you eternal life. Now, you're searching for it like Saul. And he can't find it because you kill it. Oh, you crucify it. You destroy it. And this is what is happening. Well, in what you were saying, it seemed to me that Saul said he was searching for the word of God. But, or well, he seemed to be seeking to find out what God wanted. Mm -hmm. But he knew the word of God. God told him. Mm -hmm. Stop being king. Yeah. That was the word that God had given to him. He was Stop rebellious. being king. Mm -hmm. But Saul is seeking for a word, a from, word God. from God. But if God has given you his word, 
instructed you with his word, told you what his word is, it is to obey it. Mm -hmm. Not to try and say, I need to find out what, what I need to find out things. God will never tell you anything. He was in a state of denial. Yeah, he didn't, want to, he didn't yeah. want to accept, accept the word the of word, God, yeah. but yet he still wanted, wanted to be the word of yeah. God. Yeah. He, he's saying, I don't want that word yeah, that says, he want this word. I can't be king, yeah. but I want another yes. word that tells me, how can I carry on with my kingly yeah. duties? Yeah. 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 So for those of us listening, you can't abandon the word that God has given to you and expect another word, exactly. and expect a different word. And expect a, you know, you mentioned all these different Bible translations. Sometimes I think people are actually making translations of the Bible to suit themselves, to suit yeah. themselves, oh, yes. or their doctrine, Easily. or what they believe. But yeah. Yeah. I'll just read quickly from what you read in Samuel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just read it out, and then we'll we'll go on to mm -hmm. something. But um, it's a uh, First Samuel chapter fifteen, um, verse uh, twenty two and twenty three. But obviously, anybody reading, yeah. please read the whole book, the whole chapter, because. You would get insight. Amen. And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Mm -hmm. And uh, we mustn't reject the word of the Lord and expect for God to, to, to just tell us to continue and to carry Well, to be wants. king, rejected us, I've rejected you for being king. Well, you know, the king is not just, um, I know Samuel, uh, Saul was the king of Israel, but God, we are king and priest of well, the word of God. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, 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 it's interesting what you say because so for, because I'm king, I can just give God sacrifices, mm. Absolutely. offerings. I've got plenty. I'm wealthy. I'm rich. I can just, you know, I can just give burnt offerings and sacrifices. Isn't that enough to satisfy your God, Samuel? Well, you see, you know? the thing about it, the thing about it, um, and the, what, Jesus, I'm saying, yeah. what I'm saying, Remy, mm -hmm. because you can't give tithes and offering and money yeah. in expectation to believe that you're satisfying God. Yeah. You can't Absolutely. use material things to try to please God. Yeah. But it's the same then and it's the same now. Well, precisely. We're mm -hmm. still thinking we can buy God. Yeah. Exactly. Not, you can't buy it. It's not for it. sale. There's no price. Yeah. But you see, I'm looking at the king because you, we have to think spiritually. The, the king, we rule, you have dominion, you rule, you destroy, and you be king. What is hindering us from ruling? What is in our heart that is hindering us from rule and dominate the world dominate not the things of the world but to rule in a way that god the king of kings can be glorified is sin it's sin so god says sin is at the door of your heart it's desire to have it but you must rule over it that's the only time god said you must rule he didn't say you must rule over man no. he said rule over sin because mm -hmm. when you rule over sin then man will be subjected to god so we rule over sin and when you think about it, we're in the Bible that the Bible said rule over man. He didn't say that. No. He only said rule over sin. Now, when you rule over sin, the sin, I think, I like the Proverbs because the Proverbs said, a man that can rule over his spirit is better than a man that can destroy a whole nation. Jeez. So your, your spirit is full of is full of troubled, and your full your spirit is troubled, your soul is full of sin. And if you can rule over the sin that is controlling you to do things, then you are better than a man that destroy a nation. Yeah. Mm. And this is what it is. We need to rule over. Are you ruling over the lies that you have on the inside? Are you ruling over the stealing and the anger and the jealousy? If you can't rule over those things, you will not be able to rule over. The Bible says a man must rule over his own house. Our own house is our own house. Yeah. This Raymond must be able to rule over himself. You, I must control my anger. I must control the things that is sinful in my eyes. And is the word of God, God's sword of His word, that is allowing us to rule over these things. And it's, God said, "But sin is at the entrance of your heart. It desires to have you. But I've given you my word to rule over it. And I tell you, if you don't." Use the word of God to rule over the sinfulness in your heart. The sin is going to rule over. But some ruling must happen. It's either you rule over sin 
our sin, sin rule, rule over you. you. But there's no middle ground. You can't rule over sin and sin rule over you and there's a middle ground. You have to rule over it or it rule over you. So, if in this part of the discussion that we're having, people have allowed things like tithing and offerings and money to rule over them, how would they serve God? They can't serve God when they make... Um, because obviously, they are the part of sin ruling over you is to give you that mix of tree and you know that's kind of going to something else but let me just briefly say you're that talking about the tree of knowledge of good and evil. exactly yeah. so it's a giving a god a part of a part of something do you give him a part of good and a part of evil that is mixing up that part god they said do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because the day you eat of it you shall surely die that's the word of god yeah. but satan said no Eat from the tree of the knowledge and good of, of good and evil. Having a bit of knowledge of good and evil and serve God just like that. So it's kind of like the tithing saying, give God the sacrifice. And by giving the sacrifice, God will have pity on you because he wants a sacrifice, doesn't he? But you forget which sacrifice God want. We can't, as I said in the early discussion, that we can't give God anything because all we ever have is sinfulness yeah. <laughs> so god don't want our sin so god prepared himself a lamb hallelujah and that lamb is jesus he said i have given you something in your hand i've prepared that for you i love the world so much that i gave my only son as this ultimate sacrifice so you can't say there isn't a sacrifice i demand something I demand something because when I look at you, Amen. your wages is just sin. Mm. And the, 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 the wages of sin is death. death. All you have to give me, all you ever work for is death. Mm. You are supposed to die. There's no yes. way you can live. But God said, no, I love you so much. Mm. I, God Come is so good. I am going Lord. to give you my son. Amen. And my son is going to come inside of you. He's going to cleanse that sin that is inside of you. And then you can give me that fruit that I demand, that I will be glorified. So that is what God wants. Amen. Now, I don't know if I should go back into um, the Malachi. Well, I think yeah. you, 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 if you want to, yes, it's not a problem. I think, I think, yeah. idea, I think so. if, you, if, you, if you want to finish off that bit in Malachi, yeah. I think you can. Because I've got a few scriptures to read, mm -hmm. but I can read them just after. Yeah. So, so basically that was just the overview of um, what God demand and I hope people understand this that God don't want our sacrifice because you could pay tithes until thy kingdom come it is not going to take away sin out of you. I paid for many years yes. and it doesn't make me financial better mm -hmm. it made me financial worse yes. that is for if you're looking in the flesh it made me financial worse. Tithing make you financially worse anyway because no mathematician will tell you that you must give your money off to people. And if you give what you've got, all of what you've got to somebody else, that which God has given you to give you food, clothing, shelter, you take it and give to somebody, you're going to be hungry. You're going to have to work harder. Nobody will tell you that that's, that's any use for anybody. God give it for your own family. You take care of your own family. You, you buy the clothes for them. You buy food for them. The things that their physical body need. You don't take it and give it to people to say, if you give them, you're going to be blessed. That is just, Amen. that's just so stupid. It's so, so stupid. For the people, how did this tithe come about? Well, it's coming from the Bible. Mm. That's the thing. Yeah. The Bible, the same word of God that tells you, you must, because we read it. The Bible said yeah. you must pay tithes. Yeah. But we are, we are elaborating and trying to find out what is the tithe. Right, yeah. That's the thing. Because many people use the word of God. It's the same thing that Satan used. Mm -hmm. Satan twists the word of God. Yeah. So Satan said to Jesus, did, did God say, that God didn't really say you shall surely die. Because God knows that the day in which you eat of this fruit, you're mm -hmm. going to be wise. And you're going to know good from evil. Mm -hmm. And Satan said that to, the, the, you know, to Jesus. Yeah. Now, to even Adam. And then even Adam said, Oh, so God is withholding something from me. And then the, the knowledge come in. So I want some knowledge. We can get some knowledge. And aren't we living in the age of knowledge today? So we have to be very careful of that. But 
the, the, the truth is God's word tell us don't do it and he wants us to obey his word Amen. not to do it don't do it because if you do it you shall surely die and the you is not your physical body no. the you is your soul, soul that will you will never die My God. Jesus said Whosoever believeth in me and that believing word is not mental, is called pistio, which means whosoever comply and mm -hmm. obey my word, they shall not perish but have mm -hmm. everlasting life. You will never die. Believing in the word is constantly eating from the tree of life. That tree of life is God's word. You can't die. You're going to live forever and ever. And as long as you eat from the word of God, you cannot die. We realize that Saul died. We realize that Eli died. Yeah. We realize that all these different people, their example, Judas died. Yeah. Because they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They all wanted, they all disobey God. Disobey. Every one of them in the Bible, you see, that disobey the word of God from the prophet or whatever, whatever the prophet said to them, when they disobey God's word, they either fell over and brought their neck like he, yeah. he, Eli, yeah. or they never come and pierce themselves like Saul. Yeah. Or go and hang themselves like Judas. But they die. They all die. They all kill their soul. Oh Lord. We see. And it's, it's just not obeying the word of God. So we will be very careful. What we need to be very careful. To make sure that we understand the word of Amen. God. And we obey it. Obey. Because when you obey the word of God. You are living. When you disobey the word of God. You are dying. Yes. Let me repeat this. When you obey the word of God, you are living. Oh my God. This is life that Jesus opened his mouth and taught them Amen. saying. He opened his mouth and blew into our soul the breath of life. And that breath become a living soul. The day when you stop from taking the breath of God inside of you. We, tell me, which one of us can actually breathe? How many times do you take a breath since we're in here? You don't even know you are breathing. Amen. But if you not breathe for let's say 10 minutes, yes. you're dead. Yes. Since the time we were here, we are here. If you haven't been breathing, you would have died long time. My God. This is the breath of God. Jesus. And you may sit there and say, you don't always have to read the word of God. You don't have to bathe too often. Why are you using so much water? Why are you bathing? What? The day you stop breathing, oh just like how you can't stop breathing the natural air Jesus. for your Jesus. physical body, Jesus. if you don't, if you stop e breathing Jesus. this word, we call it the breath of life. This is breath of life. Amen. When you stop breathing Hallelujah. this, you shall surely Jesus. die. My God, this is what it is. God. You stop breathing this, Jesus. you're gonna die. Mm. This is your air for Jesus. your spiritual. Man, my you don't God. breathe this, you're gonna die. My God, I crazy. need breath. The word is oxygen. It's oxygen. Praise God. You don't breathe it for your natural man. Hallelujah. If you don't breathe this natural air, you're dying. Thank you. And if you don't breathe this natural air for your f spiritual body, you are dead. You shall surely die. My God. So every day, you know what it is? Sometimes I turn on different things. I have my, we have so much things that are exposed to us. We can get the Bible on YouTube. Yeah. Sometimes I'll turn on the Bible on my phone. I'm at work. I put it on. I listen to the Psalms. And the word of God. So it's just like a breath of fresh air. I take in the word of God. And something I never knew before. The word of God opens something else. I just love to dwell in my place. Amen. And that is the word of God. Amen. I play the word of God into my house. When you know in the night I'm sleeping. Keep the word speaking. Yes. Because it's breath. Keep it going. Hallelujah. Everywhere you go in your car. Keep hey, the word of God Jesus. going. Glory because it is God. the breath of life. Yes. Hallelujah. But many people. Thank you you know what they're taking? They're having the breath of. Um, um, the different singers that sing pop songs. Stars, pop stars. Those are dead works. Them. If you eat from that. Mm. And you eat in the breath of life. And then you go and eat. The, the worldly food. You shall surely die. Because yes, it's a mixture. You're contaminating your soul. So the thing about it. If you, as I said before, I think there was a recording I said, if you have a bottle of water and you put a little tiny tip of poison in there, you don't have to, just a little tiny tip. You don't have to even see it. As massive as that bottle of clean water is, it's contaminating that water. Jeez. And I wouldn't drink it. Because it's poison. It doesn't matter how small. How small it is. So when we put a little sin inside of yeah. our soul, 
is contaminated. The whole thing is contaminated. Jesus. The whole thing. So let us not contaminate our temple, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Let us make sure that the word of God is kept there and keep it pure. So we realize that um, he said, I am going to send my messenger. And as we said, that the messenger is John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is going before Jesus. Right? And that is repentance. And it's going to prepare the way for the Lord. So before the, Jesus can come inside of our heart, we must repent. Mm -hmm. And we must bring fruit of repentance, as Alfred read earlier, what those fruit of repentance is. But what he was saying, and who shall stand when he come? You know, so he's going to come. So who's going to stand? So when Jesus come, remember, and that was when the kingdom of God began. The kingdom of God, John was saying, Jesus was saying, I tell you the truth. What do you think of John the Baptist? When you go out in the wilderness, what are you going to see? Do you see a man in dress in um, purple and King Garmin? He said, no, those who dress in that is in the palace. Yeah, yeah. But he's saying, you go to see a man. And he was talking about John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. And he said, I said to you, of all the prophets, yes, yes, John yes. the Baptist is the greatest right. of all of them. But I say, tell you the truth. Those, this, the smallest in my kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. Yes. Now, Jesus was talking about his kingdom which is a new covenant or the new testament that is to come. John the Baptist was, and the Jews actually knew this, that Elias or is going to come, be the last prophet before the Jesus come, the New Testament. So Elias came and he said, I said to you, John the Baptist is Elias. Amen. If you, may be, if you may receive this, John the Baptist Amen. is the Elias Amen. that you expect to come. It makes sense when you understand it. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so, so Elias Ooh. came. Elias yeah. came. And he was the last prophet before the Old Test before the New Testament come. And John the Baptist is because yeah. that's Jesus Christ is coming and Elias must come. You hear people saying, these are the days of Elijah. Yeah. These are any days of Elijah. These are the days of the Spirit of God. These are the days of God's Spirit. These are the days of Jesus' Word. You understand? So those days of Elias is gone. Jesus Christ come now. And when he come now, he's actually establishing his kingdom. So when he come, he said, when you pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. The kingdom of God yes. is actually being here over 2,000 years mm -hmm. ago. Jesus has already come. Amen. He come. Now we said, when I come, I'm going to go. And then I'm coming back. And before I come back, I'm, when I go, I'm going to send my comfort of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is here yeah. right now. Right and now. the duty of the Holy Ghost is to bring things into your remembrance. Yes. It shall convict the world of righteousness, sin, and judgment. He is actually doing that yes. ministry Jesus. right now. These are the days of the Holy Spirit. And I said, when the dispensation of Jesus Christ was, they didn't believe him. No, it's the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And they don't even have Jesus inside of them. Because Jesus has to come first yes. before the Holy Spirit come. Mm -hmm. So Jesus, repentance come um, to bring Jesus. Yes. Then Jesus come, then the Spirit yes. come. So we need to repent to bring the word of God. When the word of God come, Jesus said, my word, their life and spirit. His spirit will automatically come. Jesus. And when his spirit come, he will convict you of righteousness, sin and judgment. This is the dispensation of time that we are in right now. It may be a long time, over 2,000 years, but God is that faithful yes, and is that merciful mm -hmm. right now he's saying that um he's gonna become a, like a fuller sop and he shall refine and purify the silver and they shall purify the sons of levi and purge them as gold and silver the sons of levi remember of all the sons in terms of jacob they did not have levi did not have any inheritance mm -hmm. So Levi was set as a priest to take care of the house of the Lord. So as Alfred was saying, the tithing was to help to take care of all of that. 
but realized the Levites they were they were eating off the tithe. They were basically um, oppressing the widow and hiring in wages. They themselves need to be purified. Okay, so the Bible is saying he's going to come and he's going to purify all of that. When he comes, he's going to purify all of that. So we realize that it's, 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 it's the Levites that's going to purify and it's also going to purify us. He's coming to purify our soul. That soul that is being full of contamination, full of sin, is coming to purify. Jesus ain't coming to say, if you pay tithes, you're going to be few. Tithes don't purify your heart. It's Jesus, the word that is coming and it's the Holy Ghost that is going to help us. And it's the, it's the Spirit of God that is going to help us to prove our heart. It's his true repentance. Jesus come. And then by repenting, the Holy Spirit come. And the Holy Spirit is going to purify us. That's what he's going to do. Purify us. That's what Jesus was, um, the Malachi was looking ahead in today. What is happening now? He's purifying his, us, his sons. So he's saying, even... He said, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, his sons of Jacob are not consumed. So he's saying, even from the days of your father, he have gone away from my ordinance, I have not kept them. So God said, you know what? I don't change, I'm merciful. So you may think that your father, Abraham, Jacob, all of them, they have really proved, done very well. But he said, even of the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances. Even from the days of your father. Even when Moses was there, they still have full of sin. So we may look and see the patience of God. And we see how he's been patient. And because he's so long-suffering and patient, we think that there have been people who have been keeping his word all along. Yes, they have been, but you could name the few. Right? And so we think, okay, this God has been patient and he has not consumed us. And because of his patience, he kind of will accept the way things are. Even though they have not kept the ordinances of God. God is saying that you haven't been keeping my ordinances, but I'm long-suffering. It's not that you have kept them. It's not that you have kept them in a way, so I am pleased with them. Even from your fathers, I have not been pleased with your ways and with their ways. Really, they couldn't keep them. This is Absolutely. why the messenger has to come. Yeah. This is why he has to tell them there's going to be a, the, the Messiah is coming. There's going to be an announcement. Amen. You're going to go into repentance and he's going to bring change. So all of that that you've been practicing. What have you been seeking? Just suddenly yeah. appear at his temple. Because you guys have been seeking him. But you can't really get it done. So he do, he, do, he done away with the temple in Shiloh. He done away with this temple. He done away with the priesthood. He's saying all of those things that um, have been practiced in all my ordinances, they have not been kept even from your fathers. They could not keep it. And God allowed them to be practicing in them, practicing them for a while for them to understand that they can't keep it. Looks and when man realized that they can't mm-hmm. keep it, then they will say, if man would just say, Lord, I can't keep it. Yeah. All, that's all God is asking, you know. Simple. It's interesting because it looks like God is sending Jesus to help them. He's sending exactly, Jesus that's what he's saying. To cleanse them. He's yeah. sending Jesus to purify them. He's saying to, saying to them, you, you can't really, you're not really serving me right, but I'm going to do something so that you can serve me right. I'll do something so mm. you can live mm. the way I want you to live. And I think, you know, it's, mm. it's interesting because how did we who believe in the new covenant go back to that absolutely yeah, yeah absolutely I, you know i was in there i used to think yes yes but it's because people can use the bible to manipulate what you oh, think yeah. a person yeah. can use a scripture to say oh yes this is what god wants mm. but you have to look at the time frame that was once upon a time mm. one day but even those who once upon a time tried to obey that word couldn't but this is just a witness yeah, it's just a it's just a witness of what had happened for our um enlightenment for us to uh, be encouraged and all of that not to go back to it so he's saying all of this your fathers have not obeyed mm-hmm. obeyed my covenant you know he said you know um even from the days of your fathers you have not obeyed my covenant and he said then shall he said in verse um in verse um 4 
verse 3, end of verse 3, that you may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So he said he's going to purge them. Amen. Then he can, they can offer to the Lord an offering of righteousness. Amen. So God said, I've done away with all the different offerings that you've given. Now, when you are purged, you can now offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. And what is that righteousness? An offering of righteousness, then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord. Hmm. As in the days of old and as in the former years, and I will come near to you to judgment and I will be a swift witness. So Jesus was a witness to them, a swift Amen. witness. So he came and he was telling to the scribes and Pharisees, he was telling them, he said, I'm a witness, a witness. Yeah. <laughs> he said, who is your father? You don't know my father. He didn't know them. So he was a witness to yeah. all of them, to the scribes and Pharisees. And against the sorcerers and against the idolaters and against the false wearers. Jeez. He was a witness. And I'm just saying, is God a witness, you know, God is coming, and we think that God is coming in a different way, but He's here. Yes. He's coming to every individual yes. house, yes. every day. Yes. It's kind of like when the blood was on the, um, the door, Jesus. they were, the, 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 you know, the dead angel go over to every door. Mm. And the door, we knew that is your heart, that yeah. is you. God judgment is coming to everybody individually. We're looking for a big explosion thing, but... Not everybody born the same time mm -hmm. and not everybody died the same time. Mm -hmm. Judgment has come on everybody in different ways. Jesus. So when Jesus Christ come to your house, will he find his word living there? Mm. My God. Will he be a swift witness to you and say, you know what? Here am I, but where are you? That's what happened to the Jews. Mm. Here am I, where are you? You don't know me. You don't know my father. You don't know me. You don't know me. He said, I don't, you don't know me. And that's a swift witness. It's so swift that they could not repent. It's so swift because there wasn't any fruit of repentance then. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. And the world is, it's coming so quick. And people have this idea that it's going to come, you know, we have this sweet by and by idea. But Jesus is coming right now. Yeah. Quickly. Quickly. Quickly, yeah. right now. No. And the Holy Spirit yeah. is drawing you Jesus. and he's teaching you and he's showing you and he's coming quickly. Are you repenting oh or God. have you repented? Have you been accepted? That is Lord. what is happening. Have you been is your offering being accepted when God come quickly? Have your heart been changed? Will he take you in? Will you continue to eat from him? Or are you just rejecting like the Jews? Jesus. We have nothing to do with him. Crucify him. That's what he does to many. Many said, crucify him. And then they seek repentance and they can't find it. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, Very interesting. Have mercy. I'll, I'll just read a couple of scriptures. Mm. You sure um, you want to come in now? I'm not going to finish up soon. Alright, okay. Well, okay. no, actually, yeah, I do want to bring in okay, go on, because yeah. it does sort of tie, does tie in with, with, that, yeah. with um, what, what you're saying because we're talking about this tithing. We're talking about the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And you were saying how Christ came, that the, this, this, this purification of the, the, the Levites mm. um, had to happen. Yeah. Um, but some people have dwelled only on them. You have been cursed with a curse because you've not brought in tithes and so forth. So they, they've brought themselves to a stumbling block. Mm -hmm. They have failed to read just a few more verses. Mm -hmm. um, so we so, say people to read the whole chapter, the whole chapter all the time. Yeah, yeah. 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 So... You know, there is a sort of, um, there was something in Galatians that I wanted to read, which is about the curse. Because I think some people, they're afraid of the curse. So let me put that. Yeah, in go ahead. Yeah. Or even in Genesis 12. Mm. You know, but yeah. it mm -hmm. just says um, in Galatians chapter 3, mm -hmm. and of course, if you could read the whole chapter, you'd be doing very well. And he said, it says here in verse 7, I say, Know you therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Hebrew through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith, they which be of faith are blessed with faith for Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law, 
are under the curse. Mm. For it is written, Curse. Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Mm -hmm. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. All right? Mm -hmm. Amen. So, um, read, someone read Genesis chapter 12, meanwhile. Because that tie in with also what Alfred just read the blessing and the curse. My God. Okay. Genesis 12. You refine it in. Yes. Yeah. From 1. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Mm -hmm. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Aram. Amen. Amen. So God said, um, this is a blessing that yes. God said, the whole family of the earth shall be blessed. Right? And, you know, this is the curse was that Abraham would have been cursed mm -hmm. if he had stayed in his family. Yeah. So God said, if you move out of your family, I'm going to give you a blessing. Mm -hmm. And if you stayed in your family, mm -hmm. you will continue mm -hmm. cursed yes. there. And the whole family of the earth is going to bless True. because you yeah. have obeyed me. Mm -hmm. Right? So God used that blessing, the son, Jesus Christ, we know, through Jesus Christ. We have faith okay. through Jesus Christ, by Abraham through Jesus Christ, and we get that blessing. So we understand that this is a blessing. Yeah. It's not, you know, if you don't pay tithes, no. you're going to be cursed. Mm -hmm. Right? And then they tie the Abraham with Melchizedek. So we're going to go into that a little more. So yeah, you can yeah, probably find good. the scripture. You yeah, probably have it there already. But um, we have, um, he said um, that they, they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Offering in righteousness. And that's just flag of Jesus everywhere in my yes. mind. Righteousness. There's nobody else that is righteous. righteous. No, not one. No. Jesus. Who is righteous? Oh God looked on the earth and said, in the psalm said, there's no one that is righteous. There's no one that doeth good. No, not one. So God actually, my God, he actually looked down on the earth with his righteous, loving eyes. No one really does righteousness. No, not one. And I look and I feel myself, my God, that is so sad. And then I always said, God, make me at least one of them that does righteous. And it's not through me, but it's through your son. Yes. I need to Amen. be that one that when you scan through the earth, you may see a Raymond heart coming up. I want righteousness. I want holiness. I want to be like my God. You know, I want to be, I just don't want to be like the same old person every day. No. Robbing people, stealing and wanting vanity. Yeah. I want to be different. And I know all that is in me is not what God wants. So I said, I want your word. I am trusting in this word. And holding on to it. Yeah. Because this is the pearl of great price. I'm not going to let go of this. Because everything else is contaminated. Amen. I need this word. And you see, what the devil does. The devil wants you to move away from the blessing. Yeah. This is Jesus oh, Christ. Yes. Your Bible, your word. The word of God is Jesus. Is The purity of God's word is Jesus. Jesus. And when we move away from Jesus, something else is coming to take over. Yeah. And that's sin. That's sin. That's why obedience is one of the most powerful key. You know, just obey. So you see, when you're in heaven, when you're in heaven, because the kingdom of heaven is on earth, yeah. thy kingdom come, come as it yeah. is in heaven. 
Jesus is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Now, in heaven, why is it a kingdom of heaven? Now, why you want a king to have a kingdom? Yes. So in heaven, if the kingdom of heaven, since the kingdom of heaven is on earth, who is the king? Jesus is the king. Who you obey? Jesus. So people want to say, oh, when I go to heaven, I'm going to obey Jesus. No, you won't. No, you won't. If you, if you can't obey him on earth right now, you ain't going to obey him when you go to heaven. So this is it. We are. We must say right now, I'm obeying my king. My king said, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all of your heart. I'm going to tremble at what my king said. I'm going to bow my heart down to it. And I'm going to obey what my king said. Every word that come out of the mouth of God that is written, I am going to obey what Amen. my king yes. said. And when you obey the word of God, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Can't go this wrong. is your life. Yes. This is the kingdom of God. Don't expect to obey him in the street by and by. No. Now. Now. So now. Your light can shine before men. Exactly. So He's not going to shine in the street. Exactly. When you die, it just dies. Yeah. It's a light in heaven. We don't need to. You don't need your light, light to shine in heaven. Why should you? The, enough light is there. But we need the light to shine on earth before men right now. So they can see. Yeah. So they can see. Exactly. We have the lamp. We have the, we have the lamp. lamp. And he said, no one light a candle and put it under the table. Why do you want to put it under exactly, the table? You, you want to it. let it yeah. so shine yeah. before men. On earth. Yes. Right now. Jesus. So I don't need to go to heaven to shine my light. No. The yeah, earth need yeah. it. Exactly. And that's why God put us here with Hallelujah. his word. To shine it in yes. every little corner every that we are. Corner, this is what it is. We Amen. To let our light shine. So I'm finishing up now with um, the, um, the, the purification. But... Um, so what he says, to me to read no, let me just okay, finish okay. up this bit. And then I said, um, because he said, um, God said, I don't change not. So your son of Jacob not consume. And as I elaborate on that already, so I said in verse 7, even from the days of your fathers, you've gone away and you have not kept my ordinance. He said, no, return to me. Hmm. You couldn't keep it by your own. Mm -hmm. You couldn't keep it. And most of you can't even realize it. You don't hold up your hand. What God wants us to do, to be honest, to be honest, you know what? Since I begin to say to the Lord, you know, Lord, I still have this problem in my eyes, you know. And be honest, God, you know, God, remove it. Mm. If I have a sinful problem and I go to God and say, God, why is it that I'm still doing this? It's not what your word said. I'm still doing it. I still love it. What is wrong, God? Yeah. I know your word can do it. Why is it that it's still happening to me? Mm -hmm. I want it out. And I make up my mind that I don't want to do it anymore. God remove it. He will remove it. Because he said, behold the Lamb of God. We take it the sins of the world. Be the Lamb of God cannot take that sin away until you give it. Yes. If you hold it, you're going to keep it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a time bomb yes. that kill you. Mm -hmm. But when you give it to the Lamb of God, it's going to take it away. Mm -hmm. And that's what he said. But most people want to keep it. Oh, I love this sin. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's going to kill you. Yeah, Give it to the Lamb of yeah. God. That's what his purpose is. is to take away the yeah. sins of the world. But he ain't going to take it until you give it away to him. So he said, you know, you haven't been keeping my ordinances. Will a man rob God? He said, I will ret he said, return unto me. No. <laughs> it's quite interesting. He said, return unto me. And I will return unto you. Which means they were with him before. They were with him before. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been all along that people have been disobeying God. No, people start out really well. Mm -hmm. Right? And God's word come to people and people start out well. They would listen to the word of God. But something happened. They now gone to different things. Mm -hmm. As time goes by, as the God begins to bless them, mm -hmm. as God begins to open doors for them. And, you know, because of the word of God, you know, some material things come along the way. Now they have moved away from God. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying to you people and myself, riches will come. Yeah. It will come. It will come. And riches is going to come. Mm. And you may have a lot. But I'm just telling, you, telling us and encouraging us, do not put none of that on your heart. No, set not your heart. Let, make sure that your heart don't... It, because any time when this removed from your heart... Mm. Richie said, oh, I want to sit yes. here. It's cozy. Mm -hmm. I want this place. 
but the temple, the holiness of God, the 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 the, 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 the throne of God should only have the word of God, nothing else. Abraham was rich, and Abraham said he sees this as nothing, because that's what they are. They are vanity. They are nothing, and willing to walk away from it any time. That's what it is. With money, with material things, count it as dumb, because that's what they are. So they were before God. They were walking with God for some time. But something happened. They removed from God. So God is saying, no, return to me. Return to me and I will return to you. Jesus. Return to me. Move away from vanity. Yeah. Come back to me. Come back to the place where you first knew me. I was rep Repentance was there. And I believe the, 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 the Levites, they repented. They knew God before. They, they had a walk with God. They knew God. God showed himself. And God had to send his son to bring things back into place. Yeah. There was light on the earth before. And then the devil bring darkness. Yeah. So God said, no, come back to me. Return to me. And I will turn. He said, will a man rob God? Quite interesting when he said, return to me. And I will return to you. He said, will a man rob God? Now, the robin, I tell you how the devil tricky fire with this. Mm -hmm. Use the robin as, okay, so first, if you love money, will a man rob God? Ching, 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 the money start to shake. Oh, they're gonna, it's now a revelation. The offering is gonna be filled now. Will a man rob God? Mm -hmm. So now it's time to collect more offering. But that's not what God is talking about. Will a man rob God? You only can rob God of something that belongs to God. Man. God said to them, what is for Caesar, give it, give it to Caesar, Caesar, and what is for God, give it to God. It's quite interesting that they take up a coin. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, show me a coin. And they asked Jesus, should we pay tax to Caesar? <laughs> Jesus said, okay, let me see the inscription of yeah. one of your money. Yeah. Jesus, so, you're so frightened of that because I wasn't even thinking about that. Show me one of them things that you use to pay. One of them uncircumcised yeah. Philistines. Show me. Just show me. And Jesus put it in his hand and said, You see that Caesar on it? He said, Whose inscription is on this? I know in America you have some inscriptions that you can't be trust, but then you see some man on it. And you see the eye, the unseen eye, and all of the yeah. dollar. Yeah. He said, Who inscription of the, is this? He said, Caesar's. Jesus said, Give unto Caesar what okay. is Caesar, and unto God what God. Give unto the flesh, what is the flesh, and unto the spirit, what is the spirit. What is physical is physical, what is spiritual is physical. Don't mix them up. Caesar wants your money, your taxes, but God is looking out for your soul. Yeah. God is looking out for your soul, absolutely. That is what Alfred. God is looking for. That's what is God. He said all souls are mine. He didn't say all taxes or all money is mine. The soul of the Father, the soul of the Son, but the soul that sinned, continues to sin, shall surely die. So he said... You rob me. Yes. Will a man rob God? So, if he said, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God, we know that God wants the soul and God put something in man which he wants back and that is his soul. So he blew into man and I can just see Jesus standing, open up his mouth and he taught them saying, breathing the word of God into them. Jesus. And that word bringing light and life into man, and man become a living soul. So that word that you have on the inside of you, God is coming back, and when he comes back, he said, I'm going to come back, and you can find that scripture, Alfred, I know you have a lot, find it. but you can find a scripture where, when he comes back, he said, he give the tenant, um, you know, to keep some land or something, and when he come back, he said, he wants you to trade upon that, the talent that he give you. So that word that Jesus came, you know, as a landowner, mm -hmm. the land of our soul, hello, yeah. the land of our yeah. soul. Amen. So he came yes. and he, he, he breathed soul, yes. that, he sowed that word into the land yes. of our soul. He expect us to keep that land. So what he did, I think we read, well, we, we, we well, talk about the land there's, that he there's, actually... There's, 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 two, there's two things. One is where um, the, some, some of the, 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 there's a field mm -hmm. and the, the, the vineyard owner, he comes... And he wants the fruit of his field. Absolutely. It's his, you know. It's his. And it's also the one with the talents. Yeah. Um, so, but, but, yeah. Uh, you, you can find it later. Okay, yeah, 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 but I need to finish okay, up this quickly. So, we know that there's a part, I think in Isaiah chapter 5, when he said, okay, um, 
you know, yeah, you take, it, same, yeah, yeah. take out the briars and you take out yeah, all of yeah, that yeah, and, yeah. you know, you, you plant the seed and he said, you know, I need my fruit, you know, so we can read it later on. Yeah. So that is what God wants. He blew himself and he said, my word shall not go back, come back to me void. void. When God puts something in, he wants a return. Yes. He don't waste time. He put his word in you and we are carriers of the word. And the evidence that we are carrying of the word, we look at the Ark of the Covenant. They, they used to carry the Ark around. Yeah. Now we are now carrying the Ark, which is the word of God, on the inside of us. Nobody don't have to carry it for us. We have foot. Yeah. We're walking with the word of God in our hearts. Now, will a man rob God? Yes, you have robbed me. Yes. A man, can a man rob Jehovah? Can a man rob God? It's kind of like the question. Will a man rob God? Jesus. How? Can a man rob God? Yeah. Can a man, can a mortal man rob God? Rob God. It's kind of that question. Mm. Can a mortal man rob God? All of us full of sin. How can a mortal, how can man rob God? Jesus. God said, Yet you have robbed me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yet you have robbed me. My God. How can that happen? You have robbed me. How can this be? Where will you rob me? He said. In tithe and offering. Oh. You brought me with that tithe and offering. Now you have to understand what is that tithe mm-hmm. and what is that offering. But the same scripture said, the offering of the Lord, the sacrifice of the Lord is broken and contrite spirit. He will not despise. So how can you rob me? Because when you look further up, he said, then they will offer unto me the offering of righteousness. So we're robbing God righteousness. We're robbing from offering to God righteousness as an offering. We're robbing God from offering the tithe. The tithe is one tenth. It's a tenth of your earning. But that tenth is what is deposited in you from the word of God. So the tithing is Jesus. The tithing is that word that Jesus, God blew in you when he opened his mouth. And that word need to bear fruit. Amen. That is what is being robbed from God. Because even Jesus. when that fruit, if you rob God that, he said, he are cursed for he have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, if I don't ensure that my life light shine before men, men can't see my light and come and glorify the Father. So I'm robbing this old nation. It's kind of like Isaiah when he said, I saw the Lord. And he was high and lifted up. And then he said, you know, he said, um, I said basically, I have your I'm cursed. And I, just the people around me. The whole nation is cursed because of me. I dwell in a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the Lord. So Isaiah saw the Lord, and Isaiah realized that the people that is around, that is around him. They are cursed as well as him. So we are responsible Amen. for the people for ourselves first, but we're also responsible for our home, the people around Amen. us. We're also responsible for the people that we go to work Amen. in. And Jesus came on the scene and said, Let your light Amen. so shine before me. He didn't he bring that um adjective to say, let it so shine. He put so much emphasis on it. Yeah. Let it so shine. He didn't say let it shine. Mm-hmm. Let your light so shine before men. Put some effort into yes. it. That yes. they may see your good works. Yes. And that good works. What is that? Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness. Amen. That's the fruit. They come and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So Amen. that is a tithe. And I won't go any further. If you don't get it, ask God for revelation. But Ralford, read about Melchizedek and all of that. Because all of the church leaders, they, 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 they love to get on the back wagon of Melchizedek and Abraham and all of that. So I'll read now a couple of cha- few verses here and there and everywhere. Um, and I'll just I mean, as quick as I can. But it's um, obviously read all the book of yes. whatever we read out. Because those of you who are listening, it's in your... It's your responsibility to know the word of God. You know, don't just take it because of what we've said. Take it because of what's written there. So I read chapter 8. Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. 
We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of, the, of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which is established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them, by the hand and led them to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Mm -hmm. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me. From the least to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Amen. So this is a song. Yeah, this is the song. Okay, so we know that. Is that Hebrews chapter... That was e Hebrews chapter 8. So Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 7 and well, others I mean, were talking about e Melchizedek. Even if you... I mean, it mentions Melchizedek in Hebrews chapter 8, mm. but it mentions it in the right context because it mentions it by not trying to dwell on Melchizedek, but trying to show you Jesus Christ. Yeah, so it says, it says some... Mm. So after reading Hebrews chapter 1 to verse 7, you will see it's talking about Melchizedek, you're talking about faith, and you're talking about many things. Yeah. But when you go to verse chapter 8, he's Nine, saying, 10, of 11, all 12. that we have said, this is the sum. Wow. This is the conclusion. This is it. it. And then <laughs> he's summarizing yeah. from verse 1 to verse 7. Wow. And then within and verse eight, chapter 8, 12. 9, 10, 11, 12, that is the sum of everything that he's spoken about. Jeez. And there's a lot in that. And if you're listening... You need to read that because you yeah. need to know. People don't read. People that. don't no. read. People are lazy. People yeah. don't read the word of lazy. God. I mean, we kind of run almost out of time on this one. But I'll just read something from Corinthians. And then of course, we'll have to probably do another part to, to this. But this is just something to say that when you're reading the Old Testament and you're getting locked into the Old Testament, you have to be mindful that you don't stumble and fall. And blind yourself from Christ. Because Christ has come now. Yeah. And it's not. The Old Testament is now old. It's ready to vanish away. Yeah. Now there is a new, covenant a new covenant. In Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we need to know that. But I'll just read this anyway. It says. Do we begin to commend ourselves. Or need we as some other others. Epistles of commendation to you. Or letters of commendation from you. You are our epistle. Written in our hearts. Known and read of all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not in tables of stone, but in the fleshy tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Mm -hmm. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the false face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of the condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more 
that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, but their minds.